I like that's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty bad about that too. Huh? I am? Good. Ready? All right, First Baptist Church, it's good to see you here this evening. Uh, those of you joining us, great to have you. At this time, let's stand and sing Blessed Assurance. Aren't you thankful you got a story to tell? This is my story. 
And we tell it all day long what Jesus Christ has done for us. So let's go to him in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we love you. It's a privilege to serve you. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that we do have a story to tell about your salvation, your grace and mercy that you have freely given to us. We ask that you bless this service tonight for your glory and for your honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to sing. Trust and obey.
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you once again as we gather in your house to worship you, Lord, to lift your name. Lord, I just ask that you be with the sick, Lord, in this community. Lord, you be with the lost. Lord, just give us the strength and the courage to be that, continuing to be that light. And Lord, if there's anybody in this building tonight, or if there's anybody watching and they don't know you, if they don't have that personal relationship with you, Lord, I just pray that they give it all to you, Lord, and start walking with you. And Lord, I just ask that you be with Brother Nathan, Lord, as he brings your message, Lord, and may we receive it with enthusiasm. And may we be doers of your word and not just hearers, Lord. May it touch someone here tonight. And Just forgive us for where we fail you. And all these things I ask in your holy and precious name. Thank you, Tyler, for that sweet prayer. Thank you for leading us in song. Great to see all of you here on a Sunday night. Y'all glad to be here? I'm glad to see you here. Even those of you way up there in the balcony here on a Sunday night, glad to see you here. So tonight, we're going to be talking about the goat. And there's a lot of talk about the goat, and maybe some of you are not familiar with the goat but there's this, the discussion about the greatest of all time. Now, those of you that may be keeping up a little bit with sports, you realize that Tom Brady is getting ready to play in his 10th Super Bowl. No one has ever done that before, and people would say about him that he is probably the greatest quarterback to ever play. There's a young man by the name of Patrick Mahomes. He's from the Tyler area, and he's getting ready to play in his second Super Bowl, and he's a young and coming great quarterback, and people are saying, is, is he going to be the GOAT? Now, tonight I'm going to tell you unequivocally who the GOAT is. So take your Bibles and find Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, we'll look at verses 20 through 25. The Bible says, Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant, the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And I appeal to you, brethren... Bear with the word of exhortation, for I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those who rule over you or lead you and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. The greatest of all time. You ready for it? You know what it is already, right? Who it is. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the greatest to ever live. No one will ever be like Jesus. For the Bible says that he is the great shepherd. The great shepherd. And when we think about this great shepherd in our own life, let us be reminded that he is and will always be the great shepherd of his sheep. And I'm so thankful that we have that great shepherd in our life. He guides us. He leads us. He directs us into his paths. Now, I want you to think about it from this perspective tonight. Sheep have to have a shepherd. Sheep have to have a shepherd. Now, what would happen if you had sheep but you didn't have a shepherd? Oh, you would have a lot of wandering sheep. They would be going off the cliffs. They would be attacked by the wolves. They would ultimately be destroyed. And so the shepherd is there 
to guide us, to direct us, to protect us from the harms of this world. Just like sheep have to have a shepherd, every team has to have a coach. Now, I've used this analogy over the years, but our coach obviously is Jesus Christ. He tells us how to live our lives. He tells us what we must do in order to be effective as a Christian. He is the coach. Now, I can remember when I was in a school, I was a little bit younger, but we had a, a varsity football player that decided if he didn't get to play quarterback, he was going to quit. So the coach, one of the witness coaches in Texas, told him, you can quit if you want to, but you're going to miss out on a winning team. So he decided, because he didn't get to play quarterback, that he was going to quit. And Miss Betty Lou, guess what that team did? They won. They kept winning and kept winning. And finally, he had enough of it. So Cody, he said, can I get back on the team? He wanted back on the team. The coach said, under my conditions, will you get back on the team? You will play the position that I tell you to play. You won't choose the position that you want to play. So he called the team together, as I understand it, and said, will we let him back on the team? He quit. And the team agreed that they would let him back on their team. And after time went on and he excelled at that position, they were a better team. When it comes to life, we have to understand as believers that Jesus Christ is our coach. Just like he is the shepherd of the sheep, he tells us how we're supposed to live our lives. Notice what the Bible says here in verse 21. Make you complete in every good work to do his will. Working in your sight what is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, His desire for us as our coach is to do what? The author of Hebrews says, To make us complete in every good work to do whose will? His will. Not our own personal will, not our own desires, not our own wants, but to do His will. And I'll tell you this, the sooner you can realize this about your journey with Christ, that it's about doing His will and bringing glory and honor to His name, then the more submissive we are to God's plan and purpose for our life. You see, when you resist what He wants for your life, then I will tell you, there may come a time where he lets you have what you want to have. But it won't be, your, won't be his best. But he wants to show us how to win. How to be effective in life. How to ultimately accomplish his will. So how do we know his will? Well, I want to show you something. I've done this over the years. But his revealed will is right here in his word. If you ever feel led to do anything that contradicts the word of God, I can unequivocally say you're outside of the will of God. Now, it may hurt your feelings, you may not like me, but I'm going to tell you if it contradicts the word of God, you're outside of the will of God. And no matter what you try to do, no matter what an individual may try to do, You will not find as a Christian contentment and fulfillment in life. Just won't happen. Because you're outside the boundaries that God has established. And He wants us to know His will. Not only do we know His will through God's truth, but also through prayer. Now, when you have an important decision to make, like a, a new job or a new opportunity, I hope that you spend a lot of time in prayer. 
I hope that you're seeking after the Lord's will and, and oftentimes your prayers may be like this. Lord, let your will be done and not my will be done. Now, that's a good prayer to pray. Lord, let your will be done and not my will be done. And I'll tell you, when you honestly pray that and you mean that with all your heart, watch out because His will is going to be done. He will make sure that His purpose and plan for our life is fulfilled. Now, because He is our, our great shepherd, He is the one that gives us guidance and direction. And then also, how do we know His will? He provides spiritual counselors in our lives. The Bible says, in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. Now, you've heard me say over the years, I, I've had conversations with people. And they'll be working through a decision or something that they need to do in their own life. And they'll say, well... This is what I'm going to do. And I said, well, who advised you to do that? I'll say, mom or dad? Maybe even a grandparent? And I'll say, well, hold on a second. What does God's Word say about the situation that you're talking about? I believe the Bible addresses all of our circumstances, many situations in our life, and we go to His truth. Now, I'll tell you this. Sometimes... It's a hard pill to swallow when somebody that you trust and respect has given you advice that contradicts the Word of God. So you have to have spiritual counselors in your life to say, hey, this may be something that you need to consider and think about. So knowing His will is revealed through the Bible, through prayer, and spiritual counselors. And I want you to know something tonight. This is amazing about what the author of Hebrews is teaching us. We have everything that we need to know God's will. Everything that we need. We don't have to rub our hands together and say, Man, I need something else, God, to know your will. Now, I know how some people are. They say, they take their Bible out, and I wouldn't encourage you to do this. But sometimes they say, well, God, what's your will for my life? All right, here's a verse right here. And they look at that verse and say, well, that must be God's will for my life. I heard about a man that was doing that on one particular instance. And he says, well, God, what's your will for my life? And it's, he turned to the scripture passage, the verse that said, Judas went out and hung himself. He said, oh, no, that's not going to work. Closed his Bible. Opened it up again. Found another spot that said, you go and do likewise. He said, wait a second. That can't be God speaking to me. Be very careful. God can speak in ways like that. But don't try to use situations and try to use scriptures to your own advantage. Now listen to me. God can speak like that sometimes. You're reading through a passage, he speaks and he reveals his will to us. But oftentimes as you're studying the scriptures and as you're seeking God in prayer and as you're going to the spiritual counselors, you know what his will for our life is. Because God equips us with everything that we need. Isn't that good news tonight? You have everything you need. We're searching for God's will in our life. What's his purpose? What's his plan? For many of those players that are getting ready to step out on the field and play the Super Bowl, some of those guys are Christians. And you'll notice when they do their interviews, they'll give God the glory for the abilities that he's given to them. And they believe it's a platform that they've been given using their athletic ability to give God the glory. Now I'm going to test you real quick. Miss Julie up there and Reagan and McKinley, they can't say a word about this, okay? They can't say a word. But our basketball league that we have here, we wear shirts. We wear shirts. Who can tell me what it says on those shirts? Yes, ma'am. Everything we do is for the glory of God. The ministry that we have. 
Miss Julie, I know you're up there by the camera there, but you tell us out loud what that verse is. Yeah, give God all the glory for what He is doing through us. You think those little kids can learn how to give God the glory for what they're doing? You say, it may be simple, but when they make a shot and they say, Lord, thank you for that. Lord, thank you for the ability. You see, one of the things that you understand is that there are some people that may have limited abilities. But they can still be used by God to to bring glory and honor to His name. When we think about our own lives, we want to do this. Verse 21. And you, what is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Who do we want to please with our lives? Church, you know the answer, right? It's Jesus. It's to bring God the glory. Now, I will tell you, if you are more interested in pleasing people than you are God, there's a problem there. We're not looking to be people pleasers. We're looking to be God pleasers. Because one day we'll stand before Him and we'll give an account of the life that we've lived. No one will be standing there with us. No one will be looking over our shoulder and say, God, hey, let me tell you, I know all about that person, what they did and what they didn't do. It's about God and doing what's pleasing in His sight. Now, let me ask you this tonight. Can you go anywhere in the universe and get out of the sight of God? The psalmist David understood that in Psalm 139. He said, no matter where I go, the deepest parts, God is there. The highest parts, God is there. We cannot escape the presence of God. He is everywhere. So we please Him in everything that we do, everywhere that we are, because he's watching. He's listening in. That conversation that you had, he heard it. What you did when you thought no one else was around, God saw it. Shouldn't that encourage us to always be thinking about his presence Because He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is all-knowing in that He is omniscient. He knows all things. And if He knows all things, don't you think He knows what's best for our lives? Even before the very foundation of the universe, God had a plan and purpose for our lives. You see, we don't want to leave this out, but in verse 20 it says, Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. God's purpose for His Son, Jesus, was to be crucified on the cross. That was His purpose. He lived on this earth for 33 and a half years. And there were times when He would pray as He was getting ready to be crucified in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, let Your will be done. He knew the pain and the agony that was upon his life. Yet, my friends, he loved us so much that he went through that entire experience for you and for me. That was God's purpose for the life of Jesus. And the blood accomplishes the eternal covenant This morning I shared with you that without the shedding of the blood, there's no remission for our sins. You see, the blood is what allows us to be in covenant with God because that covenant is everlasting, can never be broken. The blood that was shed for you and me, it's a blood that will always be remembered. I want you to think about the songs that we sing today. Do we sing a lot about the blood? You see, when we think about the cross that's behind me tonight, behind that screen tonight, it's a pretty symbol, isn't it? People wear it around their necks. They say, oh, this this is beautiful. 
But let me tell you about the cross. It was a bloody mess. Jesus shed his blood. Now, how many of you would go around wearing an execution chair? You'd say, oh man, this is beautiful, isn't it? That's what Jesus died on. An old rugged cross. When we see the cross, we need to be reminded of the blood and the, and the sacrifice. And listen to this. The goal of the Christian life is to obey God and to do what is pleasing to Him. Let me say that again. It's to obey God and to do what is pleasing to Him. If you obey God, you can rest assured no matter what happens to you, you're going to be all right. God's in control. He wants our obedience. Just as we sang in the song, trust and obey. We trust Him. We obey Him. And as we go throughout our life, we want to live a life that's pleasing to Him. And tonight, you may see those guys celebrate when they make a touchdown. They'll do a little dance. They'll get excited about it because they've scored a touchdown. Six points. Let me ask you this tonight. One day, when you're able to celebrate what Jesus Christ has done in your life, how will you celebrate? If someone can get excited about crossing a, a white line and going into the dirt... Can't we get excited about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Pleasing Him, worshiping Him, serving Him. And then listen to this. Verse 23. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free. With whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those who rule over you or lead you and all the saints... Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. A prayer to close out the sermon. It is the benediction, as we call it. The author of Hebrews has just preached a sermon. He encourages people and he warns people. He warns people and he encourages people. Tonight... I want you to be encouraged, but I also want you to be warned. Because how we respond to the sermon as individuals in a congregation determines the blessings of grace. The blessings of grace. Paul says, grace be with you all. In the south we would say, y'all. Grace be with y'all. Amen. Tonight, know this. Christ brings salvation. He brings salvation. And when we have salvation, we can sing victory in Jesus. Tonight, do you have the victory? Those of you that are watching online, do you have the victory? Because the only way to have victory in life, oh, this is great. It'll make a great hymn. Victory in Jesus. All these other victories will come and go, but only what we do for Christ will last. When we receive the victory of our salvation, that's just the starting point. It's not the finish line. We tell others that they too can be saved. And we pray that God's grace would be upon all of them as we live in peace with Christ, as we live in peace with each other, and as we serve the Lord, knowing that He's watching us because we're always in His presence. We want to please Him above everyone and everything. A player that is on a field, he wants to impress his teammates from time to time. By doing something good. Oh, and his teammates may say, he's the best player on the field. 
But if the coach doesn't see the potential and recognize the player, then the player will never step on the field. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And when we know Jesus, He has work for us to do. So grace be to you all tonight. With every head bowed, with every eye closed. Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? I'll tell you, when, he know, when you know Him, there's no sweeter person in all the universe than Jesus Christ. He's the sweetest person I know. It's the sweetest name I know. There's nothing or no one like Jesus. He's the greatest shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. He's the good shepherd. Tonight, tonight, do you know the shepherd? Have you put your trust in him? Are you letting him guide and direct you all the days of your life? If you don't, in just a moment, you can come and let me know that you've received Jesus. Oh, I've heard stories and I've seen it with my own eyes. People that were playing church gave their life to Jesus, surrendered their life to Him on a Sunday night and said, I want to be gloriously saved, just as you said, preacher. If that's you, come and let me know. Maybe others of you would say, I'm saved, preacher. I know that I'm saved. Let me ask you this. Are you seeking to please God? Are you seeking to do God's will every day of your life? Do you want to bring glory and honor to His name? Then be careful how you live, where you go, what you do. We're saved by faith. We're saved by the grace of God that is given to us. Oh, and grace is wonderful. But never cheapen His grace by living a life that's not pleasing to Him. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what you've done in this service tonight. Thank you for every person that's here. I ask your blessings be upon them and their families, Lord, as we seek to glorify you. Jesus, we thank you that you are the greatest of all time. No one will ever compare to you. You are the sinless, spotless lamb who takes away the sins of the world. And Jesus, we love you for that. Thank you for forgiving us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to stand now. As Melanie plays, you come and do business with the Lord. As the Spirit leads you, you come. Thank you for your kind attention tonight. You may be seated here. For those of you that have watched us online tonight, thank you for being a part of this service. 
Lord willing, we'll see you Wednesday at 6 o'clock.